Hey, what's up everybody? Seems like if I'm following trends on YouTube to get pointless subscribers that are never going to watch my actual content, I need to do what other YouTubers are doing. So today we're going to do the person per, per, uh, It's 1.40 in the morning and I can't sleep. Leave me alone. Anyway, it's 1.40 in the morning, so I decided to do what other YouTubers are doing right now and take the personality test on 16personalities.com because... I can't sleep and my cat won't shut up and my guinea pig won't shut up. I'm just going to, we're just going to get started because this is long. So we're just going to do it. So do I regularly make new friends? We're going to kind of speed run this. I'm not going to give too many explanations for things. We're kind of just going to go through it. Realistically, I kind of do. A lot of my friends say that people kind of just seem to gravitate to me for some reason. And... They don't really understand why, because admittedly I suck at conversation unless I'm like trying to sell you something at work. There's a fly buzzing around my head and I want to kill it. Anyway, so we're going to click sort of because I'm not going to stay friends with somebody if I don't get along with them or if I find them boring to talk to. Anyway, spend a lot of your free time exploring various random topics that pique your interest. Uh, kind of, not, uh, various random topics. Not really, actually, no, not really, because if you look at, like, the channels I'm subscribed to on YouTube, it's either cars or computers. If you look at what I do in life, it's either cars or computers. I'm not going to go out of my way to learn a random topic about a fact about a painting or something like that. So we're going to go, no. Uh, seeing other people cry can easily make you feel like you want to cry, too. Not really, but that's more the autism side of me. Like, if it's somebody I know... Uh, we're going to go even lower. Um, if it's somebody that I know very well, like a very close friend, it's not going to make me want to cry, but like at least I know the right thing to do is comfort them, and I'm really bad at comforting people. Um, I, I am the meme, they're there. I am the meme. Uh, you often make a backup plan for your backup plan. I barely make a plan for my plan. I don't even have backup plans. We're going to strongly disagree with that. You usually stay calm even under a lot of pressure. Heavy disagree. Uh, once I hit like 31 years old, I remember my first anxiety attack. It was actually the my first anxiety attack that was actually like oh my god, is this what an anxiety attack is? It was probably two months ago. I've always been a type that's kind of high strung. I just can't help it. I have things that, as the cool kids say, are triggers. And they make it hard for me to stay calm as well. But ever since I discovered Kratom and Kava, that has helped a little bit. CBD used to help, but not really in a way that I liked. Um, and it was too expensive, so it's a lot easier for me to use Kava or Kratom because my friend has a Kava and Kratom coffee shop here in Ohio. Anyway, at social events, you rarely try to introduce yourself to new people and mostly talk to the ones you already know. Is there an agree button over here? Like off the page can i make my own custom agree button i suck at introducing myself to new people usually they have to introduce themselves to me or i'm not realistically ever going to talk to them or like a friend of mine has to introduce me to them so we're going to definitely go with the middle there you prefer to completely finish one project before starting another do y'all know me y'all know me for this like Combat Arms private server. That ended up turning into Combat Arms Reborn. And Combat Arms Reborn, not our fault that it got canned for the moment. Um, all the 1320 projects. <laughs> uh, TPS. I started a series on that, and I still haven't made episode two. Uh, in my daily life, I have six cars. One, one of them runs. One and a half of them run. I don't finish a damn thing that I start. 
I cleaned my refrigerator today. I did spring cleaning around my house. And then I looked down and noticed that I forgot to clean one of the drawers. And I went, eh, I'll get it later. I don't finish a damn thing that I start. Ever. It even affects me at work. Like, I told my boss when I got hired, like, hey... I'm very bad at finishing one thing before starting another. I do eventually finish all the things, but like, just let my brain do what it does. You are very sentimental. No, we're just gonna go with no. It's the same as like comforting. I'm not sentimental. Um, no, that's not entirely true. I'm mixing up definitions. I'm a little bit sentimental. There's very few things that I do hold near to the chest. My marching band uniform from high school. Marching band was a huge part of my life in high school and made me a lot of friends that I unfortunately don't have today. Um, my Uncle Jimmy's uh, cross necklace. I'm not religious in the slightest, but I'll never give up that necklace. Um, I actually gave it to my dad to hold on to. It was his brother. Um... I gave it to him to hold on to just because I didn't want to lose it in the freak show that is my house. Um, and then there's a couple other things that I have that just mean a lot to me that I'll never give up. I have a couple guitars, two of which are at, uh, autographed by my favorite uh, singer or my favorite lead singer of my favorite band. So I'll never get rid of that guitar. I haven't played it in probably two years, but... I'll never get rid of the guitar. Actually, it's behind me. It's a weird, ugly acoustic that needs strings. Um, but since he autographed it, it means a ton to me. So I am kind of sentimental. You like using organization tools like schedules and lists. I am trying to learn how to do this. Right now, no. But I told my girlfriend recently, I was like, hey... Our schedules conflict so often. We need a calendar on our fridge, and we need to teach ourselves to use it. Her and I are both very bad at this. But I have a whiteboard I'm going to hang up. That's literally, I don't care how embarrassing it is. Our friend, If it's friends and stuff coming over, I don't, I don't care. They understand. They know us. I'm putting a whiteboard next to my front door, and I'm going to write stuff on it that we need to know whether it's walking in or out of the door. I'm putting it next to my front door. So do I like using them? I like the idea, but I'm still going to slightly disagree because I'm not actually actively doing it. Even a small mistake can cause you to doubt your overall abilities and knowledge. It depends on where I make the mistake. Overall, no. I don't think so like if I'm fixing an iPhone and I nick something and the LCD backlight doesn't work that doesn't make me doubt my overall abilities because everyone's going to make a mistake once in a while so that doesn't really make me doubt my abilities if it's a new thing if it's something new like I'm going to be taking apart the engine of my Fiat by myself and, like, if I make one small mistake, it's going to be, like, the end of me mentally. So new things, yes. Um, but overall, no. So we're going to go with slightly. Uh, you feel comfortable just wake, walking up to someone you find interesting and striking up a conversation. Not really, because I suck at conversations. Um, look at me, I'm a YouTuber. I'm talking to my own two computer screens at 1.48 in the morning. You are not too interested in discussing various interpretations or anal analyzing creative works. Art? No. Video games? Yes. Reverse engineering those video games? Hell yes. So we're going to kind of click yeah. Um, you are more inclined to follow your head than your heart. Y'all aren't going to understand this joke, but I'm going to understand this joke. Which head? Some of you are going to get the joke. Um, so I'm going to say yes. <laughs> you usually prefer just doing what you feel like at any given moment instead of planning a particular daily routine. I need a routine mentally. 
I can't do a routine because of other mental problems. I swear. It's ridiculous. Um, The anxiety, the depression, the autism, they make it hard to have a daily routine because if that daily routine gets boring, then I suddenly start doing something else that's outside the routine, but I'm working on it. So I like the idea of, I, I like just doing whatever I want at any given moment. But I know I need a routine to keep my stress and anxiety at, you know, levels. So certain below levels. So we're going to kind of click this. You rarely worry about whether you make a good impression on people you meet. I don't give a shit what people think of me. The one thing you can count on me for is I'll tell you the truth. And I'll tell it to you straight up without sugarcoating it um it's admittedly when i was younger i was kind of if you looked up the words pathological liar in the english dictionary my picture showed up um and with my psychologist back in the day i even admitted i was like i know i'm a pathological liar 10 years ago don't take this out of context this was well over 10 years ago um help me and in turn of curing myself of that, I've now made myself too honest to the point that, like, honey, does this dress make me look fat? Dear, you look like a cow. Now, I'm not going to actually say that, but, like, if there's an extreme to it, sometimes I go there. <laughs> so, I don't care. Honestly, I don't care what people think about me. You enjoy participating in group activities. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, we have what we call the family game night once a week at my friend's coffee shop. It's a bunch of us just got together and slowly other people have introduced their way into it. Uh, we might start making it like a Facebook event because there's so many people that want to be there every week. Um, it's our family game night. And it's awesome because it's board games, Nintendo Switch. One of these days I'm going to bring Guitar Hero up there or Clone Hero. Uh, it, it's a ton of fun. But you like books and movies that make you come up with your own interpretation of the ending. No, let it end. It's not my job to write the movie or the book. <laughs> I do like choose your own adventure stuff. But in the end... A lot of this choose-your-own-adventure stuff that's out there is like, oh, you're going to get one of three outcomes anyway. Like, your choose-your-own-adventure is eh. But I definitely, if it's... I understand cliffhangers. I don't mind cliffhangers, but I don't like when you leave me questioning things. Like, I don't like... As people call it mindfuck movies. I don't like those. There goes monetization. Anyway. Your happiness comes from. Or your happiness comes more from helping others accomplish things than your own accomplishments. Uh, it used to be that way. It definitely used to be that way. But now since I'm working on myself so much. My happiness is coming from my own achievements finally. And it took me a very, very long time to get there. Like, very recently. Like, hey, wake up, you were fired three days before Christmas. Like, figure figure out what you're going to do. And now I'm finally getting into a routine where accomplishments on myself and for myself mean more to me than the accomplishments of others. I don't want to belittle others' con uh, accomplishments. And I'll still congratulate them and all that when it comes down to, you know, what they do. But my accomplishments didn't used to mean anything to me, so I didn't really have them. But I'm finally starting to become that person where, like, I understand my own accomplishments and others. So I'm going to go slightly disagree. You are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. Not really. If you know me, it's music, cars, and computers. I don't tend to stray off of that path. Almost at all. 
I'm trying to learn to like exercise, but as far as I can tell, even the people who say they like exercise don't like exercise. So generally, no, I do not stray off the path almost at all, unless it's two o'clock in the morning and I'm watching weird videos about ghost towns on YouTube for some reason, or physics videos when I don't understand physics. Um, so you are interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what to try next. Disagree. Uh... Is disagree the right option since I don't really tend to try anything new? You're interested in so many things that you find it difficult to choose what I No. You are prone to worrying that things will take a turn for the worse. When it rains, it's a hurricane in my life. Don't even get me started. Maybe one of these days I'll do a story time with Dave just to catch you guys up on me because I haven't done that in a couple years now. Uh, you avoid leadership roles in group settings. I like to avoid them, but somehow I still become the leader. So, eh. You are definitely not an artistic type of person. Oh my god. If you ask me to draw a circle, I'm somehow going to draw a square. Like, it's that bad. Um, you think the world would be a better place if people relied more on rationality and less on their feelings. Oh my god, this thing knows me. Please, stop with the feelings. Oh my god, I don't care that your feelings tell you, hey, I'm offended by this. <laughs> I understand some things, obviously, but, like, think things through rationally and you won't, and don't get your feelings involved, and you'll make a much better decision in the long run. You, uh, my history with vehicles will tell you that alone. The number of cars I've owned is staggering. You prefer to do your chores before allowing yourself to relax. I give myself small breaks in between because I have lower back issues uh muscle atrophy because of not moving enough so like recently i'm starting to push it more and more because my back's feeling better but and if you guys have any hints or tips or whatever you want to give me some advice in the comments down below as far as like home exercises to do even if it's a youtube video link like you won't see the comment get published if you put a link in your comment but it'll go to my uh like spam comments area and i can choose to allow the comment to go through if you have any tips or anything on like lower back exercises that would be immensely helpful to me so kind of sorta oh, i'm only 40 percent. oh my god this is longer than i thought you enjoy watching people argue oh my god i love to be a part of it I like watching people argue up until the point that one of them gets physical. I don't like watching fights. I don't know what it is about fights that just rubs me such the wrong way and makes me so uncomfortable. Um, watching people argue is fun, though. You tend to avoid drawing attention to yourself. Driving a Fiat 500, a Barth, having a 1990 Honda Prelude. Having a Volkswagen Golf R. I'm really not good at not drawing attention to myself. I'd like to avoid it, but I'm not very good at avoiding it. Your mood can change very quickly. Oh my god, almost on a dime. Especially if you give me bad news. Actually, no... Not really. I've kind of become numb to it. <laughs> I'm going to honestly say no. Not anymore. It used to. Not anymore. It's almost like things are getting worse as I get older. You lose patience with people who are not as efficient as you. Oh my god. If I'm watching you play a video game and you are the type of person that likes to check every nook and cranny, I am going to get anxious and angry. I cannot watch people. Granted, speedrunning is a little bit of an extreme but like i understand being a completionist but play the damn game and move the story along 
I, I hate people that are not efficient. I can't stand it. Um, you often end up doing things at the last possible moment. Usually. You have always been fascinated by the question of what, if anything, happens after death. Death scares the shit out of me. I know it's inevitable, but I'd like to think that if somebody comes along and they're like, hey, we can download your brain into a computer and you'll live forever, kind of like in that episode of Futurama, I'm going to do it. I don't like thinking about death. It's something that scares me. So in all reality, fascinated by it? Not really. And don't if I can avoid experiencing it, I will. I'm going to say this. You usually... Oh my god, I gotta go on. Boys, it's 2am. And girls. Well, maybe the one girl. Anyway, you usually prefer to be around others rather than on your own. Depends on who the others are. There are some friends that, like, if I had the ability to hang out with them and see them every day, I would not say no because it's comforting to be around them. But, like, uh, let's say, like, strangers are, like, constantly out at a restaurant or something like that. I kind of hate that. Um, I'm going to say the small bubble. You become bored or lose interest when discussion gets highly theoretical. Surprisingly, not really. I really like talking about theoreticals, like the what-ifs and stuff like that, or what's possible or things like that so if it's like the any kind of theories conspiracy theories too and stuff like that like anything theoretical i generally do enjoy it you find it easy to empathize with a person whose experiences are very different from no extreme Example, but real world example. Let's say you had an abusive childhood. I had a very white collar childhood. I like to say I was born with a silver plated spoon in my butt because while my parents weren't rich, I would definitely say they were like the tippy top of middle class. Like if my dad made literally a dollar more a year. (laughs) <laughs> that would have been high class or whatever they call it borderline rich um but as far as um empathy and stuff like that like if it's something i've never experienced myself i suck at being empathetic i actually had this conversation maybe two three hours ago, four or five hours ago with somebody so now, empathy is something I'm very bad at. If it's not something I've experienced personally, like, oh, my cat died. I've experienced that several times. I can empathize with that. If you were beaten as a child because your father was an alcoholic, sorry if I just gave anybody flashbacks, um, I'm not going to be able to empathize with that or show or anything like that because I never experienced it myself you usually postpone finalizing decisions for as long as possible unfortunately yes and it is probably going to nip me in the butt you rarely second guess the choices that you have made no i second guess them all the time to the point that like i'll have miniature arguments with myself and then i'll make myself mad at myself After a long and exhausting week, a lively social event is what you need. It it depends. I really do enjoy my open mic nights with my friends that is at a bar. But the social event at the coffee shop that's every Friday night, our family game night as we called it, I look forward to that every single week and it feels wrong if i don't go so yes and no i'll go tiny bubble because there's sometimes that my friend that has that bar where we do the open mic nights he does like a club night for the college kids in the college town and sometimes i'll go to that and like that's a ton of fun just depending on who i run into there that i might or might not know 
I don't know any of the college kids, but like workers and stuff there, I'll usually enjoy talking to them and like when they just need a breather, they'll like come over to me and just fist bump or whatever. And I'll just kind of sit back and watch. So kind of, sort of. All right. You enjoy going to art museums? Nope. You often have a hard time understanding other people's feelings. Like I said, if it's not something I've experienced, I suck. Anyway, you you like to have to-do lists for each day. I would like to get to that point. I am not at that point yet, and it's not something that I'm particularly looking forward to, but it's something I know I need to do. You rarely feel insecure. I am... I am over 200 pounds. I feel insecure all the time. I think my... I, I don't even believe that my girlfriend likes me anymore. I think she's just here. I am very insecure. <laughs> you avoid making phone calls. Yes, I will sit there and watch the phone ring. No, I'm not busy. Text me. You often spend a lot of time trying to understand views that are very different from your own. I used to be very, very thick-headed, and I would... If your view was different from mine or you disagreed with something, I would just shut you off and I would not talk to you about that subject ever again. As far as how I am now, one of my friends has definitely helped open me up to listening, especially lately, because I hate seeing him angry and we do disagree and see the world very differently. Um, Sometimes. But he's helped me kind of open up and be able to listen better and have conversations. And the friendship I have with him, I'll never take it for granted. Uh, so, And also, I'll spend a lot of time because I'm just trying to understand it. Because sometimes explaining things to me in the normal way doesn't work. And you have to find like a more interesting approach. In your social circle, you are often the one who contacts your friends to initiate activities. Yeah, pretty much. It depends on the friends. Uh, my friend Rachel and John, uh, some of the closest people in my life, it goes, it's 50-50. We generally have our plans that are all the time, so like Friday night, the game night. Uh, sometimes I go over to their house on Sundays They're teaching me to cook and stuff like that Because I suck at it But uh, Some of my other friends They try to hang out It's just things get in the way And it's to the point that they've kind of just Said well if you know you can hang out Hit me up instead I'm always down So yes it's me reaching out But it's because they know that my life Is a little chaotic So if your plans are interrupted, your top priority is to get back on track as soon as possible. Yes, it bothers the crap out of me when things get canceled or pushed around or changed. It used to be, it was something that I talked to my psychologist a lot, um, about a lot years ago when I was going to him. So change is something that really affects me and it'll really make me mad, especially if it was something I was looking forward to. You are still bothered by mistakes that you made a long time ago. Well, there's a five-year-old and a two-year-old. I'm just kidding. That's a terrible joke. Uh, but kind of, sort of. You rarely contemplate the reasons for human existence or the meaning of life. I don't give a shit why I'm here. I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, sometimes I'll get all deep in thought about it, but like it's maybe once a year. Your emotions control you more than you often control them. No, I'm pretty... I think the word is stoic. A lot, a lot of times people even tell me that they cannot tell what mood I'm in just by like looking at my face. So, you take great care not to make people look bad when it is completely their fault. <laughs> Ooh, that's a fun one to think about. Ooh, you take great care to not make people look bad, even when it's their fault. I'm going to go tiny agree. Your personal work style is closer to spontaneous bursts of energy than organized and consistent efforts. 
at home, yeah, it's just spontaneous bursts of energy. When someone thinks highly of you, you wonder how long it will take them to feel disappointed in you. <laughs> yeah, admittedly. You would love a job that requires you to work alone most of the time. Yeah, honestly. For sure. Especially if I could work from home. You believe that pondering abstract philosophical questions are a waste of time. Mm, not really. Honestly, I don't even know how I think about that, so I'm going to make that my first middle boy. Um, you feel more drawn to places with busy, bustling atmospheres than a quiet, intimate place. No. Uh, I actually, if I know I'm going to a particularly loud environment place or busy place, I actually take my Jabra earbuds with me because they have the active noise cancellation and I'll actually use the uh, active noise cancellation when I'm in public in a very busy place to quote unquote quiet down the environment and that helps me with the anxiety and stuff like that and from what I've been told that is, could also be like a side effect of the autism but I've never really researched it so I've had other people that are autistic tell me that basically you know at first glance how someone is feeling no. Very close friends? Yes, actually. But random strangers? Not really. Unless it's over, overly obvious. You often feel overwhelmed. Oh my god, it knows me. You complete things methodically without skipping over any steps. No, I'm usually trying to find a shortcut of some kind. You are very intrigued by things labeled as controversial. Oh my god, yeah. Uh, it's so much fun to just dig down those rabbit holes on like Twitter of people getting canceled. <laughs> you would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. Financially, probably not with where I am right now. If I was given the option of a promotion to such and such position and it paid $3 more, I would take it. But if I was in a situation where like, okay, I'm making enough, my budget's covered, I'm able to put, you know, such and such amount of money in my savings account every month, this and that, then I'm generally okay. Oh god, I got stuff that comes out of my bank account tomorrow. See, these are the things I worry about. Um, you would pass along a good opportunity if you thought someone else needed it more. So, kind of, sort of. You struggle with deadlines. Yeah. I literally just went, oh my god, I gotta put money in my bank. You feel confident that things will work out for you. No. Oh my god, I'm a boy. Sorry. Let's see what I get. I am an entrepreneur. No, I'm freaking not. I don't think so. Savvy, savvy energetic, and very perceptive people who in truly enjoy living on the edge. Yeah, but in a bad way. <laughs> um, my mind, I am 52% extroverted. So I'm a 50-50. Okay. I can see that. Yeah, I'm kind of 50-50 extrovert and introvert. Makes sense. 71% observant. I am very observant. That is true. Like I to the point that I want to be the one that drives if we go anywhere because I'm so observant of what's going on. Like if I'm on a four lane highway, I'm looking at all four lanes plus behind me in the mirrors constantly. I know what's going on around me. As far as being observant with like, oh, that girl is really flirting with me. No, I'm oblivious to that. But things actually going on around me, I'm very observant of. Thinking. Uh, thinking individual focuses on objectivity and rationality. Yeah. Prospecting. Uh, very good at improvising and adapting opportunities. Kinda. I don't really agree with that, but I guess that's what I am. Uh, turbulent. Self-conscious and sensitive to stress. Yeah, I'm very turbulent. <laughs> and I'm not putting my email in here because I don't want the pointless spam. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this 35 minute video. I know it's a little longer than usual and it's kind of outside of the norm, but I don't really sit down and just talk to you guys that much anymore. Um, there's a series I'm thinking about bringing back from my old YouTube channel where I kind of just sit down with a camera and talk. Whether it's current events or what's on my mind or how I feel about something. Uh, it, a very long time ago I did these videos where I basically just turned on my laptop webcam and I started talking. And the videos did particularly well. So I might start making those again, but for right now I'm kind of just in limbo of what I'm going to do with my YouTube channel. I want to do the electronic stuff. I have the tools and the ability to set up for it. I just need to clean up my desk. But I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.